I'm Chris Thacker, and this is The Curiosity Show from the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. If you live here in Los Angeles, you've seen our urban mammals. We're famous for our coyotes, but we've also got raccoons, possums, skunks, and squirrels living with us all throughout the city. But you might have missed some of Los Angeles' most abundant and unusual mammals. To see them, go outside at dusk and look to the skies. If you spot something small and dark, flapping and fluttering through the air, you've spotted one of our native bats. They're nocturnal, they eat insects, and you could go your whole life and never notice them. But they're all around Los Angeles, enjoying the natural areas as well as the city. With me is Miguel Ordignana, and Miguel is part of our citizen science team, and he is a particular expert on the mammals of Los Angeles, our urban mammals, both large and small. Hey, Miguel, thanks for joining us. Thanks for uh, interviewing me about mammals. So tell us, Miguel, what kind of mammals do we find in the city, and what kinds of things are you learning about them? Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to be able to study large mammals and small mammals, mammals that come out during the day, come out at night when we're asleep. If you're tracking mammals in Los Angeles, what kind of tools do you use? I mean, do you just go out and watch for them, or how do you know they're here? Some really cool tools that I have at my disposal are camera traps. And okay. a camera trap is a motion-activated camera that I can leave out for months at a time. How do you detect bats? Yeah, bats, I use a special device. I take advantage of their species-specific calls or vocalizations. And each bat has a very distinct call that has its own pitch, its own pattern. And I use a device called a bat detector. This particular one is really cool because you can plug it into your phone. That's tiny. <laughs> what kinds of bats have we detected in the nature garden? We've detected four species of bats. The Mexican free-tailed bat, which is a very common urban bat, this most common in the LA area. Canyon bat, which is more associated with rural areas, comes out at dusk, a really small bat. The human myotis, also another small bat, but associated with water. Myotis is Latin for mouse-eared. Oh, okay. Uh, so they have cute little mouse ears. Yeah. And then the most exciting one that we found is the western red bat. And that's a migratory bat that's a foliage specialist. So if you don't have trees around, that means that it's really probably not going to stop. Because we made this nature garden and we brought in trees and water to a place that never had it before, so we're seeing these bats come and visit us, along with all the other animals that have come in. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the western red bats didn't show up immediately. And as I think the garden plants and trees started establishing, establishing themselves, maturing, diversifying. It brought in more species, and yeah. one of those was the migratory red bat. Wow. We do have a big collection of bats in our mammal collection, so yeah. let's go have a look at some of these All bat right. species. This is an example of how we keep the bats in our mammal collection. We've got them dried in drawers, the whole body with the little wings folded, and then for some, we keep the skull separately. It's so funny to see the little bats like this because bats are sort of like half cute because they're a little fuzzy and they've got those cute ears. And then it turns into the leathery, the horror of the leathery wing. And the thing about bat wings that I think is so interesting and different from bird wings is it's the hand. It's actually the, the fingers of the bat that are so long and that hold the, the flaps of skin of the wing. And that claw that the bat, like if the bat is hanging on a tree or something or up against a wall, it's, it's climbing is the thumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never knew that. These are the brown bats that occur here in Los Angeles. And these bats have not just their wings, but a little bit of flap around the tail, yeah, right? Membrane, that, that yeah. Membrane, for, does that help them fly? or? It helps them glide, but also it helps them as like a, use it as a baseball mitt, basically. When they're catching insect in midair, it uses it to catch the insect and grab it. And munch on it in midair. And then keep going and keep flying. And there's none of the bats that live in Los Angeles are vampire bats? No, that's no. a good question. Okay. <laughs> uh, just checking, I'm just checking. I, do, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, they, they live in Mexico and Central America. Mexico's not that far from here. Yeah, not too far, but there haven't been any detections of vampire bats in the United States, which is... Okay, okay, Miguel, makes people, thank you. Puts people at ease. But yeah. yes, thank you for putting me at ease, and I'm also relieved to know that you're out there listening with your bat detectors, just in case one turns up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Miguel, thank you so much. Thank you so much for telling us all about the bats that you study. Thank you for coming by. Sure thing.